This is the 2023 Ford GT Mark IV. Last of its kind. This final track only model got superior aerodynamics, extreme performance and razor sharp handling that pays tribute to America's original Le Mans winning car GT40. Only 67 hand built cars will be made, in honor of the Le Mans winning 1967 GT Mark IV race car piloted by Americans Dan Gurney and AJ Foyt. 2023 Ford GT Mark IV will carry a price tag of $1.7 million each with track focused improvements. Early December 2022, Ford announced the launch of GT Mark IV, developed exclusively for the track. The V6 EcoBoost Beast has finally made its public debut at the Velocity Invitational event at the Sonoma Raceway in California. Attendees had the pleasure of seeing the GT Mark IV in action. It's an evolution of the Mark II launched in mid-2019 for $1.2 million, but this one is even more expensive as it has an eye-watering sticker price of $1.7 million. Despite its astronomical price tag, Ford has more orders than the 67 units it intends to produce, so the lucky future owners are being handpicked. GT Mark II comes with a 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 engine that can generate more than 700 horsepower. Ford GT Mark IV has a unique twin-turbo EcoBoost engine with larger displacement targeting more than 800 horsepower. There are three modes of driving. Mode 1 can generate up to 500 horsepower. Mode 2 gives you up to 700 horsepower. If you want to unlock the full power of 800 horsepower, Mode 3 gives you exactly that. However, it is not to be used in a track with twisty narrow corners. The Mark IV uses a bespoke six speed X track racing transmission for even quicker gear shifts. For a car that has an engine with the letters Eco in it, this twin turbo EcoBoost sure sounds impressively loud. It's worth noting the Mark IV has Multimatic Adaptive Spool Valve Dampers, Michelin Racing Slicks, and generates 2,400 pounds or 1,088 kilograms of downforce at 150 miles per hour or 241 kilometers per hour. It makes so much downforce that it feels stuck to the ground in a straight line. The bulky headlights necessary for road-going GTs have been replaced by minimalistic beams that look as if they simply cut through the carbon body. The two channels normally featured on the hood have been replaced by four overlapping vents, a change that drastically alters the look of the Mark IV's face. Compared to the Mark II, Mark IV's wheelbase is longer and fitted with a longtail carbon fiber body. In fact, the carbon body has been completely reworked for the Mark IV. With the addition of these flying buttresses, all aero elements appear to have been dialed up, with a massive front splitter and a set of canards protruding from the front end. At the back, a giant wing is mounted in a fixed position. Your eyes cannot miss that huge diffuser at the bottom. The journey of Ford GT models started in 1964 with the release of Ford GT40. It was an ultimate sports car with higher agility and aerodynamic shape. GT40 is a consecutive four-time winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, 1966 to 1969, including a 1-2-3 finish in 1966. In 1966, Ford with the GT40 Mark II car broke Ferrari's winning streak at Le Mans, thus becoming the first American manufacturer to have won a major European race since Jimmy Murphy's triumph with Duesenberg at the 1921 French Grand Prix. In 1967, the Mark IV car became the only car designed and built entirely, both chassis and engine, in the United States to achieve the overall win at Le Mans. The GT40 Mark I, the oldest of the cars, won in 1968 and 1969 the second chassis to win Le Mans more than once. The GT40 was discontinued by Ford in 1969. Later, in 2004 the GT nameplate was revived with the launch of a whole new series of Ford GT cars. Original GT40 got that name because the overall height was 40 inches. The 2005 GT is similar in outward appearance to the original GT40, but is bigger, wider, and most importantly 4 inches taller than the original's 40 in overall height. The Ford GT was produced for the 2005 and 2006 model years and 4,038 cars were sold worldwide. The development of the second generation GT at Ford was a very secretive operation. A handful of 12 people, including some key engineers, had access to the design studio. This secrecy was maintained inside Ford and to the press until its 2015 unveiling at the North American Auto Show. The car marked 50 years since the GT40 won the 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans. Production began in December 2016 and is scheduled to continue through 2022, with a planned production rate of one car per day.
A track day only version of the new GT, named the GT Mark II, was launched on the 4th of July 2019 at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. The name pays homage to the original GT40 Mark II race car that won the 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans. Here is the clip Ford GT Mark II winning the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1966. fairly quick and I was first away and I had uh, a tremendous lead on the first lap. Um, I went through the kink in the straight uh, fairly cautiously and the brake very, very early. In fact, I took it very easy on this first lap. It's the first year that Ford's really been serious about Le Mans. Out onto the straight for the first time and sort of wonder who's up ahead there. I can see the Chaparral fairly well ahead. Surprisingly enough, no one seems to be in any sort of drama at all. Generally have at least one or two in the in the sand. Everyone's being careful. Pretty much try, trying to stay out of harm's way. But um, I think the chances of a Ferrari camp should, should be very good. Yes, um, obviously, the chief competitor is Ford. The main thing is Ford, but you mustn't discount also the lone chaparral. Uh, but it's a very long race and rather a freak race, really. I mean, a race is perhaps the wrong way to completely term it. It should be more a sort of endurance run. It's endurance. Yeah, right. you get a few headlines if you're the fastest in practice, but. Uh, very seldom do you see the people that are fastest in practice uh, get the checkered flag on Sunday afternoon. is that um, if you do have to brake suddenly, you can't. I mean, no, you, if, no. Some, if, you, if you come up against a small car which changes course in front of you, so you have to put on the brakes, there's nobody home. enjoyable driving through that the landscape just seems to go by but very difficult because when you're overtaking slower cars it's, it's, uh, it's one line that's uh, the best way to go and and uh, it's difficult to position yourself and particularly since we're not the fastest car through there the Fords of course and, and the better Ferraris and so on are faster and you can frequently have the, the problem which is the biggest problem here at Le Mans which is uh, a car passing a slower car and maybe being passed by a car that's even faster 
uh, second behind Graham Hill. And there was an end of a crash, and the front suspension fell into the road, and they shower sparks, and the car weaved about all over the place. And then I finished up here about bloody nearly last, because I just had to coast around, you know. I got a lift back to the pits in an ambulance, which is... Uh, to say I was in, uh, in good order because the ambulance ride I think would have finished anybody off. First number one for the 159 lamps. Second number three for 159 lamps. Third number two for 156 lamps. Fourth number five for... Uh, but then we got into a problem. The, the sun came up going into the yeses. And uh, come over the brow of the hill, having just gone underneath the Dunlop Bridge, plunged down into the S's, and suddenly you could hardly see a thing. The sun was so bright. Uh, the only thing to do then was to uh, collect my sunglasses. Next time round, uh, we had a pit stop. I passed by a Ford, just preceding the, uh, I guess it's the White House section down here. And I went in, and uh, what seemed to be a reasonable rate, but the Ford, of course, uh, I think Gurney was driving, he just went through flat out. And I noticed right away, there's just the enormous gap that, that settled in between us, and he just continued to draw away all the way down here. I got a little bit bothered by another fellow that was coming along and dancing all around behind me and everything, so I just stood on it for a while. Because he's a fat fast man. No one would dispute this. We had cold air ducted into the cockpit of the car, and this was this was our only real problem throughout the race, because I liked to get the duct adjusted so that it blew the cold air on my face, and Chris liked uh, he didn't like the cold air on his face. He turned the duct away. At the end of 24 hours, little things like that can start uh, start growing into big things. It's a bit silly, really. finish trying to work out what was going to happen and just hoping and praying that nothing was going to break it. Most of the cars uh, in our cars blew up yesterday. Uh, maybe for the rest of longer we blow the Fords off too. Did you, did you anticipate the Porsche team to be as big and as strong as they were? No, they're, they're fantastic. The Porsche makes a good show.
enjoying it? Oh, yes, very much, too. Five laps to do. Suddenly it came down very, very heavy. Down the straight it wasn't too bad, providing you stayed in the middle of the road just in case something went wrong, but it was still cruising down there at about 145 to 150, I suppose. We weren't losing too much time. I was knocking it out of gear and just letting it coast around the corners because we couldn't have been doing any more than five mile an hour around the corners and then bumping it into gear again slowly pulling away. But this was the worst time for the lot probably. During, when the road was dry, it was even difficult in low gear as it was to get around the corners. And when it became wet, it just bulldozed the car straight on. The money to buy a Ford GT Mark IV, would you buy one? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.